Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 disappeared on 8 March 2014, after departing from Kuala Lumpur for Beijing, with 227 passengers and 12 crew members on board. Malaysia's former Prime Minister, Najib Razak, has stated that the aircraft's flight ended somewhere in the Indian Ocean, but no further explanation has been given. Official announcements have been questioned by many critics, and several theories about the disappearance have been proposed. Some of these have been described as conspiracy theories. The incident remains under investigation. Topic. Background Victims' relatives have questioned the veracity of the Malaysian government's statements about the demise of the aircraft, and organised a protest at the Malaysian Embassy in Beijing with the goal of forcing the Malaysian government to reveal any withheld information about Flight 370's whereabouts. Rob Brotherton, a lecturer in psychology at Goldsmiths, University of London, wrote that conspiracy theories emerge immediately after any catastrophe occurs and conclusive information about why they do so remains unavailable. Andrew Leonard wrote that conspiracy theorists were bolstered by the revelation of new satellite data two weeks after the flight disappeared that had been hidden from the public. Other factors involved the lack of a distress signal from the plane. According to Barbara Demick of the Los Angeles Times, critics of the Malaysian government's statements also found support in the Joint Agency Coordination Center's announcement on 29 May 2014 that the plane was not in the search area authorities had been combing since April 2014. Topic. Criticism and response Conspiracy-focused Internet sites claim that the official statement that the plane crashed into the Indian Ocean makes no sense. They note that a Boeing 777 does not have the structural integrity to survive crashing into the ocean, and that it would be comparable to hitting a concrete wall at terminal velocity. If Flight 370 hit the ocean, they say, it would have been broken into tens of thousands of pieces, many of which float on water such as the seat cushions and would be seen washing up on regional shores or easily spotted by search teams. Harvard professor Cass Sunstein noted that the conflicting information initially released by the Malaysian government explains the interest in alternative theories. Sunstein, who has written on the topic, argued in an interview with the Wall Street Journal on 20 March 2014 that conspiracy theories in general often are born out of horrific and disastrous situations, because such events make people angry, fearful and looking for a target. David Soki, a former FAA inspector, has said that the theories that have been put forth in this matter are important when there is a lack of knowledge, as the theories and notions help us to consider various possibilities. On 26 March 2014, he stated on CNN, in an accident investigation, it's a critical part to come up with theories. Especially right now when we don't have anything. We don't have anything tangible. We don't have something to say, hey, yes, because we don't know where that airplane is and we need to find out why. If you take one theory, the airplane would be where we're looking at right now. If you take another theory, where there was nefarious intent, they're trying to avoid radars, the airplane could be somewhere else. If you say it was, whatever it is, you've got to use these theories, weigh them against the facts so you know which one to go to. Tim Black, deputy editor of Spite, wrote, It's in this darkness, this near absence of knowledge about MH370, that speculation has flourished and an editorial in the Chicago Sun-Times, not only stated that Conspiracy theories fill a vacuum when facts are scarce. 
but also urged governments to search for the plane to debunk these theories and give victims' family members peace of mind. The common hypothesis, cited also here, that MH370 avoided Indonesian radar is based only on a statement that the plane was not observed by Indonesia. It is easy for radar observers to visually miss an unexpected object. Topic. Hijacking The possibility of a simple hijacking has been brought up by various news outlets, including ABC News and The Los Angeles Times. Speculation has mounted about the possibility that hijackers took the plane to a remote island, although no group has claimed responsibility. However, unofficial researchers have identified more than 600 possible runways at which the plane was capable of landing. No confirmation has been received from Malaysian officials. The credibility of several hijacking theories have become further marginalized following the discovery of the first definitive fragments of MH370 wreckage in July 2015. At the end of 2017, French air traffic specialists Jean Marc Gouraud, Michel Delarche, and Jean Luc Marchand launched a website with their hypothesis concerning a possible hijacking, with a subsequent location of the aircraft following an emergency ditching due to fuel exhaustion estimated at around 12 degrees 2 minutes 32 seconds south 107 degrees 22 minutes 48 seconds east, in the Indian Ocean near Christmas Island. However, the final report from the Australian Transport Safety Bureau ATSB, released in 2017, examined the possibility of controlled glide, ditching and found it very unlikely. Also their hypothesis concerning a location of the crashed plane different from the searched locations is not the only one that exists. Electronic hijacking Electronic hijacking uses systems and programming already factory installed within the B777 flight management system. This is different from hacking or cyber attack in that it requires access to the B777 security system through access purposefully programmed into the software. Notable proponents of this theory include current Malaysian Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamad. He said, "...clearly Boeing and certain agencies have the capacity to take over ininterruptible control of commercial airliners of which MH370 B777 is one." In this statement he was referring to off-board hijackers with access to MH370's flight management system via the 2003 patented and interruptible autopilot. Topic. Spoofed. Satellite data. Technology writer Jeff Wise has developed a theory in which the aircraft's controls were taken over by hijackers from the electronics and equipment bay, accessible through a hatch in the first-class cabin floor. Wise theorizes that the Inmarsat satellite pings were a deliberately laid false trail created by feeding the plane's satellite communications system false data which in turn caused the system to make false frequency corrections. These would, when later scrutinized, lead investigators to conclude the plane was headed south, when according to Wise's theory it actually flew north and possibly landed at Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. <laughs> Topic. Terrorist attack Shortly after the aircraft disappeared, some news agencies reported that it may have been an act of terrorism, possibly a jihad attack. Between 9 and 14 March 2014, media mogul Rupert Murdoch tweeted that Flight 370's disappearance 
confirms jihadists turning to make trouble for China sick. He later suggested the flight might have been hidden in northern Pakistan, like bin Laden. These remarks have not been confirmed, and were characterized as conspiracy theories by Shiv Malik in The Guardian. The following month, the Russian newspaper Moskovsky Komsomolays endorsed a similar theory, claiming that unknown terrorists had hijacked the plane, flown it to Afghanistan, and then held the crew and passengers hostage. North Korea A story circulated on Reddit that MH370 had sufficient fuel to be hijacked to North Korea as was done in 1969 with a Korean Airlines YS-11, in late July 2015, in an article about MH370, "...conspiracy theories." The Independent briefly mentioned that it had received an email claiming the U.S. had authorized the plane to be shot down because it was allegedly carrying a nuclear warhead to North Korea, though the Independent immediately added the joke or it could still be aliens. <laughs> Acquisition of Freescale staff A variety of social media posts and email chain letters claim that a patent number 8,671,381 was approved days after the disappearance of the MH370, and the right to the patent was split five ways 20% to Freescale Semiconductor and 20% each to four employees, all of whom were passengers on the plane. The patent deals with fabrication of integrated circuits on a semiconductor wafer. The urban myth website Snopes.com suggests that there is no evidence that the four inventors listed on the patent application were on the aircraft passenger list, nor that they were entitled to a 20% share of the patent, and it says it is unlikely that their share would revert to Freescale on their death as presented in the email. Retired Delta Air Lines Captain Field McConnell claimed that the aircraft was seized to obtain stealth knowledge of classified patents from from 22 Chinese employees of Austin-based Freescale. McConnell also claimed that the company has developed a classified technology that uses paint and electronics to enable traditional aircraft to be overhauled into stealthy jets. <laughs> Diego Garcia Conspiracy theorists have suggested that MH370 was either captured by the United States and then flown to the United States military base on the atoll of Diego Garcia in the BIOT or that the plane landed at the base directly. The latter theory was raised at a White House daily briefing on 18 March, whereupon Press Secretary Jay Carney responded, I'll rule that one out. Underpinning the Diego Garcia theory were several elements, one of which was the co-pilot's mobile phone contact and the plane's westward turn, both of which were consistent with a flight path toward the island. In that vein, it was reported by the Daily Mirror, without giving a concrete source, that the captain had trained in landing on an Indian Ocean island with a short runway, using a flight simulator in his home computer. Several mass media sources reported that the captain had trained using his avia simulator to land on five runways at least 1,000 meters long in the Indian Ocean region, namely Diego Garcia and Mail International Airport (MLE) and other airstrips in India and Sri Lanka. These allegations were disputed by the FBI, which reported that after analyzing the impounded flight simulator, it had found nothing suspicious whatsoever," and said that the Mirror's reports about the simulator's contents were "...unsubstantiated and unsourced." 
giving a new twist to the MH370 missing story. A former French airline boss has claimed that the Malaysia Airlines flight was shot down by the U.S. military near their base on Diego Garcia. In an article published on March 18, 2014, journalists Farah Ahmed and Ahmed Naif of the Maldivian newspaper Havira wrote, Several residents of Kuta Hubadu told Havira on Tuesday that they saw a low flying jumbo jet at around 6.15 on March 8. They said that it was a white aircraft, with red stripes across it, which is what the Malaysia Airlines flights typically look like. Eyewitnesses from the Kuta Huvadu concurred that the jet was travelling north to southeast, towards the southern tip of the Maldives, Adieu. They also noted the incredibly loud noise that the flight made when it flew over the island. I've never seen a jet flying so low over our island before. We've seen seaplanes, but I'm sure that this was not one of those. I could even make out the doors on the plane clearly, said an eyewitness. It's not just me either, several other residents have reported seeing the exact same thing. Some people got out of their houses to see what was causing the tremendous noise too, Muhammad Zahim, the island councillor of Kuta Huvadu, said that the residents of the island had spoken about the incident. The discovery in late July 2015 of debris from a Boeing 777, on a beach in the island of La Réunion, east of Madagascar, suspected and later confirmed to be from MH370, quickly led to renewed internet speculation that the plane had been shot down near Diego Garcia which is 1,475 miles away from La Réunion out of fears of a terrorist attack, although oceanographers such as Professor Sharitha Patiarici, from the University of Western Australia, said that, "...the arrival of MH370 debris in Réunion would conform to the expected path of ocean currents from the point in its flight path where it was believed to have crashed." Many people, including some of those who believed the plane had landed safely on Diego Garcia or elsewhere, quickly dismissed the debris as a fake. Topic: <inaudible> Cambodia. <inaudible> In 2018, Ian Wilson, a British video producer, claimed to have spotted the aircraft's remains in Cambodia, using images from Google Maps which were dated to 2018. The images show what appears to be a plane about 70 metres 230 feet ca 10% larger than the MH370's official measurement of 63.7 metres 209 feet. Topic: Phantom cell phone hypothesis. Some have speculated that the passengers are still alive but cannot answer their cell phones, sometimes known as the phantom cell phone theory. This was based on early reports that family members of Flight 370 passengers heard ringing, as opposed to a busy off signal, while calling the passengers' phones. Though this was after the plane disappeared, this, however, has been challenged by Jeff Kagan, a wireless analyst, who, in an email to NBC News, explained that the network may still produce ringbacks as it searches for a connection, even if the cell phone has been destroyed. <laughs> Crew suicide, hijacking The cockpit had the mandated anti-hijacker fortified doors that could prevent locked-out crew or passengers from interfering with a suicide or hijacking into the Southern Ocean. 
This can be compared to Silk Air Flight 185, a posited pilot suicide incident in 1997, Egypt Air Flight 990, 1999, Lam Mozambique Airlines Flight 470, 2013, as well as the later German Wings Flight 9525, 2015. On 17 February 2014, less than three weeks before Flight 370 disappeared, Ethiopian Airlines Flight 702 had been hijacked when the copilot locked the captain out of the cabin and diverted the aircraft to seek asylum in Switzerland. Shortly after Flight 370's disappearance, media reports revealed that Captain Zahari Ahmad Shah's wife and three children moved out of his house the day before the disappearance, and a friend claimed that Captain Shaw was seeing another woman and Shaw's relationship with her was also in trouble. Claims of domestic problems have been denied by Shaw's family. A fellow pilot and longtime associate of Shaw stated the captain was "...terribly upset," that his marriage was falling apart. Police were also investigating reports that Shaw received a two-minute phone call prior to the flight's departure from an unidentified woman using a mobile phone number obtained with a false identity. Furthermore, Captain Shaw was also a supporter of Malaysian opposition politician Anwar Ibrahim, who was sentenced to jail on 7 March after an earlier acquittal on sodomy charges was overturned in a move viewed as politically motivated. Investigators noted strange behavior by Shaw from conducting 170 interviews namely, that the captain had made no social or professional plans for after 8 March, when Flight 370 disappeared. However, according to the French journalist Florence de Changy who wrote a book about the flight, dismissing 100% of the official narrative, Shaw made an appointment with his dentist to get back his tooth crown when the dentist phoned him a few days before the 8th of March. News reports about the captain's lack of social plans and flight simulator exercises cite results of the police inquiry into the pilots, which have been shared with some of the investigation team but have not been released publicly. However, news reports on 23 July 2014 stated that the police considered the possible culpability of all those on board the plane, and identified the captain as the prime suspect—if it is proven human intervention was involved. The United States Federal Bureau of Investigation reconstructed the deleted data from Captain Shaw's home flight simulator. A Malaysian government spokesman indicated that nothing sinister had been found on it. However, the Sunday Times later reported that among deleted flight paths performed on the flight simulator, investigators found a flight path into the Southern Ocean where a simulated landing was made on an island with a small runway. In 2016, a leaked American document stated that a route on the pilot's home flight simulator closely matching the projected flight over the Indian Ocean was found during the FBI analysis of the hard drive of the computer used for the flight simulator. This was later confirmed by the ATSB, although it stressed that this did not prove the pilot's involvement, and by the Malaysian government. A book, Goodnight Malaysian 370, was published in August 2014 by New Zealanders Jeff Taylor and Ewan Wilson. The authors blamed a deliberate act of the pilot for the aircraft's disappearance, but admitted they were not able to provide any conclusive evidence to support his theory nor any motive. Ewan Wilson had previously dismissed the fire emergency theory as unlikely. New Zealand aviation expert Peter Clark stated that to take over the aircraft took immense knowledge, and that even the copilot would not have been sufficiently skilled to disable the communications system and reprogram a seven-hour flight off course. However, Clark admitted the theory would be difficult to prove even if the data recorders were found, because the voice recorders would likely have been overwritten, and because, if the pilot was in control of the aircraft, then instrument data would report no anomalies. 
Shaw's family vehemently denied the possibility of pilot suicide. Boeing 777 captain Simon Hardy told BBC News that the plane's route was probably very accurate flying rather than just a coincidence and noted that the aircraft's turn toward the northwest over the Malacca Strait allowed a clear view of the captain's home island of Penang. Someone was looking at Penang. Someone was taking a long, emotional look at Penang. The captain was from the island of Penang. It does a strange hook. In order to look at Penang, you have to turn left or right, get alongside it and then execute a long turn. If you look at the output from Malaysian 370, there were actually three turns, not one. Someone was looking at Penang. In May 2018, the Boeing pilot Simon Hardy, who had made similar claims already in 2015, claimed in 60 Minutes Australia that the captain used the flight as a murder-suicide and had deliberately flown the plane over his hometown of Penang before turning right and ditching the plane over the Indian Ocean. He said they found these results by reconstructing the captain's flight plan from the military radar and that the captain had avoided detection of the plane by military radar by flying along the border of Malaysia and Thailand, crossing in and out of each country's airspaces. Fire A number of theories suggest that the disappearance may have been the result of a cockpit, cargo compartment, landing gear, or other onboard fire. In an earlier incident involving a Boeing 777, on 29 July 2011, Egyptair Flight 667 suffered an intense oxygen-fed cockpit fire while still on the ground which destroyed the flight controls and instruments and burnt a hole through the skin of the aircraft. Despite the arrival of firefighters within three minutes, the fire took 90 minutes to extinguish. Malaysia Air's maintenance records for the 777 aircraft are required to include information on whether the FAA mandated fix to the wiring near the co-pilot's oxygen hose and replacement of the oxygen hose with one with no metallic components was performed. Another suggestion is that the pilots had turned back and were attempting an emergency landing at the nearest suitable airport in northern Malaysia, perhaps Penang International Airport or Longkawi International Airport Longkawi Island, a 13,000-foot airstrip with an approach over water with no obstacles. The emergency may have been due to an incident similar to the 11th of July 1991 accident involving a Douglas DC-8, Nigeria Airways Flight 2120, where a tire caught fire on takeoff, and the later spreading of the fire led to the destruction of the aircraft with the loss of 261 lives. In another accident, involving a fire on a McDonnell Douglas MD-11 on 2 September 1998, Swissair Flight 111 from New York to Geneva developed a cockpit fire in the electrical wiring that spread rapidly, leading to a loss of flight instruments and control. The aircraft crashed into the Atlantic Ocean with the loss of 229 lives, 8 kilometers, 5.0 miles from shore, southwest of Halifax International Airport, Nova Scotia, where the plane was attempting an emergency landing. In the Swissair case, the transponders and communications were shut off as the crew pulled the buses in an attempt to control the fire. Topic. Shoot down hypothesis American political commentator Rush Limbaugh, according to CNN, speculated that the aircraft may have been shot down. 
Supporters of this theory have noted that civilian aircraft have been shot down by military forces in the past, with Iran Air Flight 655 by the United States in 1988 and Cal 007 by the Soviet Union in 1983 being two frequently cited examples. On 19 March 2014, news agency reporter Scott Meyerowitz of Associated Press described accidental shootdown as one of seven leading plausible theories but added that there was no evidence that flight 370 was brought down by a government entity a malaysian defense official akbal bin haji abdul samad said it was highly not possible that his country's air force had shot down the plane According to the Financial Express, the Malaysian Air Force detected the plane on radar while it was in flight, but took no action because it was believed to be a friendly aircraft. In May 2014, author Nigel Cawthorn's book Flight MH370, The Mystery, was published. Cawthorn alleged that after the jet was shot down during a U.S. Thai Joint Strike Fighter jet training exercise, searchers intentionally were sent astray as part of a sophisticated cover-up. The book received considerable criticism, especially from The Australian where it was characterised thus, Cawthorn undoes everybody's good work by retrieving every obsolete and discredited non-fact from the trash, slapping the whole lot between covers." Relatives of those aboard Flight 370 criticized the book as, "...premature and insensitive." In a CNN interview on 24 April 2014, the Malaysian Prime Minister, Najib Razak, stated only that the radar tracked an aircraft which did a turn back, but they were not exactly sure whether it was MH370. What they were sure of was that the aircraft was not deemed to be hostile." On the 22nd of December 2014 the former head of Proteus Airlines, Mark Dugain, claimed that the plane may have been shot down by U.S. military personnel out of fear of an attack similar to the September 11 attacks on their Navy base in Diego Garcia. The claims were described by the source article as, "wild." Incidentally, later that same year a different Malaysia Airlines Boeing 777 was shot down over Ukraine by a surface-to-air missile. <inaudible> Cyberattack The hypothesis that a cyberattack may have been carried out on Flight 370 has been raised, primarily based on statements made by Sally Leavesley, a former scientific advisor to the UK government. Leavesley proposed that hackers may have changed the plane's speed, direction, and altitude using radio signals to the plane's flight management system. Whether existing security on commercial flights is sufficient to prevent such an attack is also a matter of debate, although Boeing has dismissed the possibility. A spokeswoman for the company, Gayla Keller, said that they were "...confident in the robust protection of all flight critical systems and inability for a hacker to gain access by either external or internal means on the 777 and all Boeing airplanes." While supporters of this theory have cited Hugo Tesso's app which hacked into pilot training software, which Tesso presented at a conference in April 2013, the Federal Aviation Administration and other major governmental bodies dismissed the significance of the app. They stated that the software on an actual plane would be different from the software on which Tesso had tested his app. Topic. Vertical entry into the sea 
A mathematics professor from Texas has argued that the plane must have entered the sea vertically, any other angle of entry would have splintered the airplane to many pieces, which would have necessarily been found already. MH17 and QZ8501 connections On 17 July 2014, Malaysia Airlines Flight 17 was shot down over Ukraine. Because it, like Flight 370, was also a Boeing 777, some conspiracy theorists have suggested that the plane that crashed in Ukraine was actually Flight 370. This is based in part on photographs of the crash scene, which conspiracy theorists claim show that the plane that crashed in Ukraine had structural differences from MH17. Experts have dismissed this theory and argued that it is merely coincidental that both planes involved belong to the same airline. When Indonesia AirAsia Flight 8501 crashed on the 28th of December 2014, various similarities with MH370 were noted, including that both airlines were Malaysian-owned and that both planes lost contact with air traffic control. There was also a reported conspiracy theory involving an alleged prediction on the 15th of December 2014 and possibly repeated on 16 and the 17th of December by a user of the Chinese website Tianya Club whose name was reported by the English speaking media to be landlord a mistranslation. The user's post warned Chinese people to stay away from AirAsia as it would be attacked, as MH370 and MH17 allegedly had been, according to the user, as part of a conspiracy by a black hand or despicable international bully to harm Malaysian owned airlines. Other online posters suggested that the user was either a Chinese intelligence official or a hacker who had come across secret information. Some skeptics suggested the user's posts or posting dates may have been retrospectively changed to create the false impression of a successful prediction. Topic: <laughs> Physically improbable theories. The theory that MH370 may have been consumed by a black hole received considerable attention when Don Lemon asked, on CNN, whether it was preposterous that it could have happened. Lemon was criticized for this by Jon Stewart on The Daily Show, and by former U.S. Department of Transportation Inspector General Mary Schiavo, who, while appearing on CNN, said that a small black hole would suck in our entire universe so we know it's not that." The Wire.com which wasn't satisfied with Schiavo's answer obtained detailed reasons why a black hole couldn't swallow a plane from Columbia University astronomy professor David J. Helfand and Peter Michelson, a professor of physics at Stanford University, reasons which did not involve any suggestion that a small black hole could suck in the entire universe. It is possible that Schiavo was expressing herself humorously, and did not expect to be taken literally. Another hypothesis is that a meteor might have struck the plane, however, the statistical probability for this is extremely low. A poll posted on CNN's website reported that 9% of respondents thought it was either very or somewhat likely that the plane was abducted by aliens, time travelers, or beings from another dimension. Topic. Pitbull and Shakira As an example of an Internet theory which they imply their readers should not take seriously, The Independent and The Huffington Post have reported the suggestion that Pitbull and Shakira's song released in 2012, Get It Started, displays prior knowledge of Flight 370's disappearance. 
The lines cited most often by advocates of this conspiracy theory are, "...now it's off to Malaysia," and two passports, three cities, two countries, one day." The lyrics, "...no Ali, no Fraser, but for now off sick to Malaysia," were linked to Mr. Ali, who was referred to by the press as one of the Iranian passengers, even though Malaysian authorities have confirmed that the 19-year-old passenger is actually called Poria Normohamadi, in the song, Ali actually refers to boxing legend Muhammad Ali, who beat another boxing legend, Joe Frazier, in the Thrilla in Manila on 1 October 1975. Proponents of this theory have linked the two passports to the stolen Austrian and Italian passports used by two passengers to board the plane. The reliable sources for this story dismiss the lyrics as mere coincidence", and indicate that to take it seriously would be a terrible idea, with supporters of the theory being described as conspiracy theorists and YouTube Illuminati. <laughs> Satire about pilot reappearing A satirical, report claimed that the captain Zahari Ahmad Shah had reappeared in Taiwan, but was unable to remember what had happened. <laughs> <laughs> claims of responsibility On 9 March 2014, members of the Chinese news media received an open letter that claimed to be from the leader of the Chinese Martyrs Brigade, a previously unknown group. The letter claimed that the loss of Flight 370 was in retaliation for the Chinese government's response to the knife attacks at Kunming Railway Station on 1 March 2014 and part of the wider separatist campaign against Chinese control over Xinjiang province. The letter also listed unspecified grievances against the Malaysian government. The letter's claim was dismissed as fraudulent based on its lack of detail regarding the fate of Flight 370 and the fact that the name, Chinese Martyrs Brigade, appeared inconsistent with Uyghur separatist groups which describe themselves as East Turkestan and Islamic rather than Chinese. <laughs> Notes <laughs>